Hi, this is Sarah Lacey. Welcome to TechCrunch TV. My guest is someone that you may not have heard of, but he was one of the finalists for international, best international company at the Crunchies, Daniel Torini from Crevo. Now, I've written about Crevo before on TechCrunch, but you're sure. definitely not a household name for our users. In a nutshell, you guys basically have like a Google-like system to pull information from you know any source all over Brazil and really offer Brazil a better way to do credit ratings and credit reports super quick in a matter of seconds than ever before. Is that a good way of describing it? Wow, very good way to describe <laughs> us. We pump data from a lot of different information sources, standardize this data and gives a credit check on three seconds. Uh, mm -hmm. The credit decision is very quickly. And it's you. everything from like, is this really your phone number? I mean, things that might, might might in and of themselves not indicate fraud or credit, but all taken together are actually more reliable than a FICA score. Sure, uh, we, we identify a lot uh, of information that al allows our customers to avoid identity theft, uh, money laundering. For instance, I can che check if your home number, the home number you gave me, is a payphone, is a public payphone, or is your really the, uh, is really your number. I can check uh, a lot of different information that data. For instance, for on insurance claims, we can check if your car has been towed away. Mm -hmm. uh, someone calls the insurance company and says, oh, my car has been robbed. No, it has been towed away. So mm -hmm. uh, there are a lot of fraud, uh, even mistakes that c customers uh, can do that we can check with our software and reduce a lot of the risks on mm -hmm. the, 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 that transaction. Now, what I think is so interesting about you guys is, first of all, you know, the big story in Brazil is this growing middle class. And so you're really enabling a lot of people to be able to buy things for the first time. But it's also that you know, Brazil has just had a very different situation with with credit because of the history of the country. And so, you know, it's kind of allowed you guys to have to be creative, but then come up with what may be a better solution. So talk a little bit about sort of the, the good names and bad names in Brazil and how it's how yeah. why this is more needed there than it has been here. In Brazil, you have no access to uh, your positive data. We have only access to our negative data. Positive data is considered a privacy issue. You, no company can access your data, right. even if you authorize that. So I wouldn't want anyone to know I bought a house. So like if I, right? So it's like that's included in positive data, isn't it? Yes, or if I was yes. a credit if card you customer are paid for correct, years, yeah. always paid my bills on time, that would be considered a violation of my privacy for a credit rating yes. to know that. Even if I authorize it, you to, to ch check my credit card data, you, you, cannot, uh, you, you do not have this power mm -hmm. because otherwise companies would force con uh, consumers to do that. Uh, what uh, we developed was a way to check information in a lot of different places uh, to substitute this information and get more creative on getting information from all those places. And actually, we are much more effective on reducing risks when doing that. Mm -hmm. uh, the Positive Data uh, Bureau will be at some point created uh, in Brazil and will help a lot, uh, uh, will, will, will help a lot uh, on uh, assessing risks. But as of today, uh, a bank has a lot of dif uh, difficulties uh, when assessing risks between two persons. We have this con concept of a clean name or a dirty name. Mm -hmm. If you have a single open bad debt on the market, unpaid uh, debt on the market, you have a dirty name, you have no access to uh, credit at all. And we, when you have <coughs> more than uh, uh, paid uh, uh, all of your open debts, you have uh, a clean name, but uh, even if you have a bad history, you have the same situation as someone who has always paid his debt correctly. Right. So for the banks, it's hard to assess the difference between those two people. And uh, with Crivo, you have more information to assess and difference between ch these two guys. The banks became too much conservative in Brazil. Mm -hmm. they, uh, they have uh, an average 40% rejection rate. Mm -hmm. And uh, with Crivo, we can uh, reduce this uh, up to 12% tw uh, rejection rate. Uh -huh. Compare this to bad debt rates that are on a verge of 7%, mm -hmm. it, uh, you can gain a lot by using right. our software. So I know you guys have been building this business for a really long time. Yeah. Um, how, is, how is adoption going since we last spoke? Um, can you tell us anything about how many customers you have, any new customers, yeah. revenues, what you expect? Sure. We expanded a lot. Uh, for instance, our employees uh, went up from 45 people to one, uh, 120 people. Mm -hmm. We almost tripled our employees. Uh, we gained a lot of uh, huge banks and huge
huge insurance companies, the biggest, uh, for instance, the 10 biggest insurance companies uh, in Brazil are now our customers. Mm -hmm. uh, the biggest banks are also our customers. Most of the mobile comp uh, uh, telephone companies are also our customers. Mm -hmm. So uh, we are gaining a lot of momentum and, uh, and growing quickly mm -hmm. in Brazil. Uh, one of the things uh, we are uh, starting now is professionalizing the management of the company. Mm -hmm. uh, we hired a lot of good people, people from Borland, people from Equifax. And also we are uh, starting to build uh, a lot of different new products to offer on this market to, to increase the, the momentum of our company. Mm -hmm. All right, so two last questions. One, I know when I wrote about you guys in TechCrunch, um, I think it was almost a year ago, yeah. a lot of VCs reached out to you Hello. who read the story. Did you guys end up taking any funding? Did that go anywhere? Uh, not yet, not yet. We are talking to some of these guys. Mm -hmm. uh, and we believe uh, at some point in the future we will have some kind of uh, investment uh, in our company. Uh, the company generates a lot of cash and mm -hmm. can uh, grow by itself uh, on the current business uh, by itself. Uh, it doesn't need external money. Mm -hmm. But uh, on the other hand, for new businesses uh, and international expansion, it would be cool to have uh, external money. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then this is your first trip, not only to Silicon Valley, but to America, right? Yes. yes. So what's been, what's been the most fun thing you've done? Uh, I love it. Uh, the most fun thing was on last Sunday, I went to Mountain View and Palo Alto and saw all those things, uh, uh, Googleplex and the history of Computer Museum. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I love it, that place. It was a, a nerdy uh, <laughs> travel. And Xerox Park, where so much Xerox everything Xerox Auto Research Center. I love it, that place. So for me, it's very emotional thing uh -huh. to see all those kind of... And I just want to point out, just because I know Brazilians, and I think this will get you mocked in Brazil, you also went wine tasting yes. on Saturday, and you've <laughs> picked your day in Silicon Valley at the Computer History Museum as your favorite day. Not the fun day wine tasting <laughs> in the sun. <laughs> Maybe I can't remember at all <laughs> from the wine tasting day. <laughs> well, Daniel, thank you so much, and congratulations thank on your you nomination. Again. <laughs>